Hey guys, welcome back to this session. And in this session, you will learn what is SQL CA or SQL communication area. You will also learn how to use SQL CA in your COBOL DB2 applications. Additionally, you will learn the significance of each variable which is defined in SQL CA copybook. In the end, I will discuss some of the important SQL codes that you should always be aware of while writing your COBOL DB2 program. So let's get started. As you know that host language and database are two separate entities and their working principle is also different. But that does not mean that you cannot combine the capability or the functionality of these entity into a single program. Now let's say you're using COBOL as a host language and IBM DB2 as a database. So you can very well write a COBOL DB2 program or an application that can execute the business functionality and on top of that can access data from the DB2 database with the help of an embedded SQL statements. Now as you know that a COBOL DB2 program used embedded SQL statement to access or to store data in your DB2 database. When these statements are executed, the output or the result of an SQL statement is stored as a result set and this data can be accessed by an application program with the help of DB2 cursors. In some cases, whenever you are using singleton select statement, the result is returned back to application program with the help of host variables. And on top of that, DB2 use SQL return codes to indicate whether the recent execution of SQL statement is successful or it had failed due to some internal error. Now let's deep dive into SQL CA and try to answer the question that is, what is SQL CA? What is the significance of SQL CA in a COBOL DB2 program? And how exactly you can use that in your COBOL DB2 applications? The term SQL CA stands for SQL Communication Area. It is a collection of variables that are used by DB2 to communicate with an application program. DB2 updates the SQL Communication Area during the execution of every embedded SQL statement. And remember, the information in this area applies to the most recently executed SQL statement. Now let's talk about couple of important variables which is defined in SQL communication area. You can use these variables to identify whether your SQL statement has executed successfully or it had failed due to some internal error. And you can very well take corrective action as per return code written by DB2. And this return code is generated after the execution of an SQL statement. The following are the variables that is defined in SQL communication area. And I'm going to talk about first important variable that is SQL code and the data type of SQL code is picked S9 of 9 COM4. So the SQL code contains the return code which is passed by DB2 after the execution of an SQL statement. A value of zero indicates that your SQL statement is executed successfully and there is no issue with your SQL statement. A positive value of SQL code indicates that your SQL statement is executed successfully, but there's a warning associated with that particular execution. For example, if you got a return code of plus 100, that means that your SQL statement is executed successfully, but there is no row that is being returned as a part of that particular execution. And finally, a negative value of SQL code indicates that your SQL statement had failed due to some internal error. For example, minus 805, minus 811. And while writing your COBOL DB2 program, you should have specific logic to handle these negative value of SQL codes. Otherwise, your program will fail. The next variable, which is similar to SQL code, is SQL state and it is defined as pick x of 5. You can use either of these variables to check whether your SQL statement was executed successfully or it had failed. However, it is recommended that you should use SQL code because it is more precise. But in case if you are dealing with any other database other than DB2, then probably you can go with SQL state. 
The next important field is SQL ERRM and it's a group variable that includes a length and a message. This field is generally used whenever you are not able to understand the reason of failure by looking at SQL code or SQL state. So generally it is used for complex debugging. The next important variable is SQL ERRD. This is basically an array and it includes six different values that can be used to diagnose an error condition. So while writing a COBOL DB2 program, I generally use SQL ERRD3 to understand the number of rows that is being impacted by executing an SQL statement. So it can give you vital statistics, for example, number of rows that is being inserted or the number of rows that have been deleted or the number of rows that have been updated by a particular SQL statement when it is executed with the help of COBOL DB2 program. And similarly, you have SQL ERRD2, SQL ERRD4, SQL ERRD5 and SQL ERRD6 and you can very well use these variables just to know the vital statistics. The next important variable is SQL1 and it's a group variable and it act as a warning indicator and the possible value of all these variables is either blank or W. So as you know that SQL communication area is a vital diagnosis tool that help you to understand whether your SQL statement is executed successfully or it had failed. So it's always a good idea to include SQL communication area in your COBOL DB2 program. Now let's try to understand how you can include SQL communication area in your COBOL program. So there are two different ways through which you can include SQL communication area in your COBOL DB2 program. So the first one is you can directly write all the variables of SQL communication area in your working storage section. And in case if you're doing that, then make sure that all these variables are initialized properly. And the second way of including SQL communication area in your COBOL DB2 program is by using include statement. And you have to specify the include statement within the exec SQL statements. So in the following example, I've used this way to include SQL CA in our COBOL DB2 program. And this is the standard way of including SQL communication area in your COBOL DB2 program. And remember, in case your COBOL DB2 program is a sub program, then you have to include SQL communication area in the linkage section of the sub program. Now let's talk about couple of important SQL codes that you should always remember or you should consider while writing your COBOL DB2 program. So the first one is minus 805 and it indicates that an application program attempt to use a DBRM or a package that was not found in the plan. To fix minus 805, you should ensure that your collection name or the package name is correctly included in your DB2 plan. Second thing that you can try is that you can recompile and bind the COBOL DB2 program. And third thing that you should ensure is that you should verify the load library and the parameters that you have specified in your JCL while executing your COBOL DB2 program. The next one is minus 811 and it indicates that the singleton select statement is returning multiple rows and program is not capable of handling more than one row at a time. So there are two different ways through which you can fix minus 811. So first one is you can use DB2 cursor so that you can handle multiple rows at the same time. And the second way to fix this problem is you can use an additional clause that is fetch first row only. So whenever you execute a singleton select statement with an additional clause fetch first row only will always return single row and that can be handled by your COBOL DB2 program with the help of host variables. The next one is minus 818 and it indicates that the timestamp of load module and DBRM is not matching. And the simplest solution to fix this problem is to recompile and bind your COBOL DB2 program. Next one is minus 904 and it indicates that the SQL statement cannot be executed because the required resource is not available. To resolve minus 904, 
you must verify the identity of a resource that was not available and you must go through syslog to determine why the resource was not available and in some cases you must contact your DBA to identify the actual cause. In most of the cases if you restart your program after some time it will work because it doesn't happen that your resource is not available until and unless there is some problem. The next one is minus 911 and it indicates that the current unit of work has been rolled back due to deadlock or timeout situation. And the possible solution to solve this problem is that you must go through your DB2 master lock to find out the process which is actually holding your DB2 locks. And in case if it is required, then you can speak to your DBA to find out the actual problem. The next one is minus 922 and it is actually an authorization failure error. And you should always make sure that you are using the correct username or the plan when you are passing all these details in your JCL. Next one is plus zero and it indicates that your SQL statement is executed successfully without any issue. Thereafter you have plus hundred and it indicates that there are no rows or data as a result of an SQL statement. And it can happen that in case if you're using cursor and your cursor pointer is already at last row and again if you issue fetch then you're going to get plus hundred. And there might be a possibility that if you're using a singleton select statement and your where condition is not defined properly, then also you might get plus 100 because that criteria is not satisfied by any of the row. Next one is minus 501 and it indicates that your cursor is not open, but you are trying either to fetch or to close the cursor in your COBOL application program. To fix minus 501, you should correct your program logic by issuing the open cursor command before issuing the fetch or close statement. The next one is minus 305 and it indicates that the null value cannot be assigned to the output host variable because you have not used null indicators. So in this case, you should always use null indicator variable whenever you are referencing a nullable column in your SQL statement. The last one is minus 803 and it indicates the duplicate value of index and this occur whenever you try to insert a new record or you want to update the existing record. And the solution to this problem is that you should report such kind of issues in your error log and you should continue with the processing of the program. So this is not a complete list of SQL codes. This is just a handful of important SQL codes that you should always remember or you should always consider when you're writing your COBOL DB2 program. I would recommend that you should go a complete list of SQL codes and decide proactively what all SQL codes you're going to use or you're going to handle in your COBOL DB2 program. So this marks an end to our today's presentation and I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel. And in case if you have any feedback for us or any suggestion, then do mention that in the comment section and I'll going to respond back after this presentation. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this particular video. Thank you.